So now we're going to use redox reactions to help create the electricity. The uh, galvanic or voltaic cell uses two different uh, redox reactions that are physically separate to produce electrons through the oxidation reaction. We make that go out of the device so we can do things with it and it comes back in uh, for the reduction reaction. We need a, a completely uh, complete circle on this. So we have our two reactions, the wire with where we use our electricity and we need a electrical connection between these two cells. Uh, the tr traditional one was actually made with a salted wire, salted string uh, in a glass tube. Uh, it was called a salt bridge. Um, some of our batteries will use uh, uh, cardboard with uh, salt paste on it. So different ways that we can use to uh, separate these. But uh, we're going to have um, oxidation reaction in, in a battery in a cell. We call that the anode. So wherever we have oxidation, it's going to be anode. Wherever we have reduction, it's a cathode. Uh, in this particular one, we have uh, the zinc uh, metal and zinc solution, copper metal and copper solution. Between these two, the zinc is going to oxidize, produce electricity electrons, they'll go out or come back in and help the copper to reduce. The shorthand notation for these cells is the line notation. We're going to have our anode on the left side, that's where our oxidation is, a cathode on the right side where our reduction is. Between them is a double line, that's our salt bridge that separates the two solutions. On the left side we have our electrode for the anode. Uh, so our metal electrode and then our solution. Whenever we have a, a phase difference, we have a, another vertical line to separate those different phases. Uh, in the cathode, we have a copper solution and then a copper electrode. So the uh, cell potential that we can calculate easily is the standard cell potential. We have um, lots of tables of standard reduction potentials. So um, this is what reduction potential will look like. It will be a, a reaction where we have our electrons as a reactant. Uh, and then we have our values of cell potential. And what we want for a spontaneous cell when they will produce electricity in the direction that we design it is it uh, e cell standard cell potential that is positive standard positive standard cell potential uh, if we end up with a negative one that means that uh, it's spontaneous in the opposite direction and if we end up with a zero it's not going to be very useful uh, for us but uh, from our reduction potentials, we're going to do the uh, more positive value minus the less positive value. So the more positive will be our cathode where we have reduction. The less positive is more favorable for oxidation. So we subtract that off, which turns the reduction into an oxidation reaction. So for this sample down here, we have two half reactions. We want to add them up and make a um, find the cell potential, standard cell potential for the overall reaction. So the more positive one is going to remain in this direction. That's a reduction. The less positive one is going to be reversed. Uh, so that's the subtraction part up here, seeing that we're reversing it. So we reverse the aluminum one, but we have a difference in number of electrons. To get them to add, we have to have the same number of electrons. So we multiply the first reaction by three, we reverse the second reaction. Now when we add them together, our electrons cancel off. That's the goal of that. 
So we have our overall reaction here. Um, and then our cell potential is this going to be the uh, more positive minus less positive. And we end up with the standard cell potential of 3.65 volts. And as with the last chapter, we saw that our standard um, free energy was relating to our equilibrium constant. We're going to find that our standard cell potential also equates to our uh, equilibrium constant. Does that through the standard free energy? Standard free energy is minus NF standard cell potential. And this N is a whole number of the electrons transferred. So for this reaction, it would be three moles of electrons. So that's the number that was, uh, we cancel off and we add the two together. So putting these two equations together, we can get our direct relationship between their uh, cell potential, standard cell potential, and the equilibrium constant. So the standard cell potential is a measure of our equilibrium constant. And then we can solve for our equilibrium constant over here. The F in this equation is the Faraday constant, 9645 coulombs per mole of Kelvin. So let's uh, apply this to a reaction from uh, the worksheet. So we have an overall reaction, we have our two half reactions, and we're looking for our delta G naught for this. So we're gonna take the more positive reduction potential, subtract off the more negative reduction potential. When we do that, we end up with a 1.35 volts. And volts is actually a joules per coulomb. So then we're gonna, Take our delta G is minus NF E zero. We put in our values. Uh, uh, five is the uh, number of electrons, five moles of electrons. Uh, 9645 is Coulomb per mole. So the moles are going to cancel off. And over here we have a joule per coulomb. The coulombs will cancel off, leaving us with our answer in joules. So we end up with minus 6.51 times 10 to the fifth joules for our free energy. That uh, is uh, minus 651 kilojoules. And um, I went to calculate the uh, equilibrium constant of this. Uh, the minus delta G over RT, which is also the same as our NFE naught over RT, uh, ends up being a 262, and E to the 262 is larger than my calculator, meaning it's larger than 10 to the 99. So we have a reaction in those uh, essentially to completion. The Nernst equation allows us to look at uh, the cell potential when it's not at standard conditions. So standard conditions, again, would be one atmosphere pressure for any gas, one molarity for any uh, solution. So the... Uh, So the Nernst equation is a uh, cell potential is equal to standard cell potential minus RT over NF log of the reaction quotient. So let's apply this to a couple problems here. Uh, so first one I'll do is a concentration cell. So we're going to have two identical reactions, manganese and manganese solution, as both the anode and cathode. The only difference is the concentrations, and that concentration difference is enough to create some electricity, some current. So the um, half reaction will be this uh, Mn2 plus, plus two electrons will produce Mn. It's a uh, spell potential, 
uh, reduction potential is a negative 1.18. So the cell potential, cathode minus anode, well, they're both the same, so we end up with zero uh, standard cell potential. So putting the, the reduction oxidation reaction together, we have a reaction that looks like um, nothing is happening. But when we do our reaction quotient, we end up with the ratio of the two concentrations, and the two concentrations are different, so we end up uh, having a value in here that's not one. Uh, so we end up with a, a small value, one times n minus three. And that's what we need to drive this reaction forward. So what this is saying is that the product concentration is low, the reactant concentration is high. So it's going to push it forward with the end goal of being identical concentrations. So this will drive this reaction forward. Uh, the log of that will be a negative value. That will cancel off with the negative in the nurse equation and give us a positive voltage for a spontaneous reaction. And in this term here, uh, the term in front of the natural log, RT over NF, is a small value, uh, a um, 0 0.0128. So we never change our voltage significantly uh, with just concentrations. So we put this all together, and our cell potential is a uh, 0 0.09 volts, less than 0.1 volts. So another reaction up here, where it's all aqueous solutions. We're given the concentrations of each one. We're asked what our uh, cell potential is. We have our two half reactions. And we do our more positive minus the less positive to get a cell potential, standard cell potential of 0.29 volts. We should check, make sure that's in the direction written. So uh, the one we kept in the forward direction, the more positive one, is the Ag2 plus going to Ag plus. And that matches the reaction Ag2 plus going to Ag plus. So our cell potential is agreeing with that, that reaction. So we're going to do our nurse equation here. We put in our standard cell potential, RT over NF, and in this case, is going to be one electron. We have one electron from both of these reactions. And uh, we crank this down, and uh, we see that we can change the volts with our concentrate. We're changing our volts with our concentration by 0.17. Uh, add these together, and we end up with a cell potential of 0.46 volts. Okay, last one, we're given two half reactions and the concentrations and pressures. We're asked what our relationship is between the cell potential and the standard cell potential. Well, to answer that, the difference between these depends on this term, um, which would depend on the sign of log of Q. So if log of Q is a negative, the two negatives will create a positive. So E will be greater than E0. If um, log Q is positive, then we'll keep that negative, and E will be less than E0. So we just have to make sure we're doing our Q right. So we add the two reactions together. Uh, we end up with our chlorine gas with reacting with cadmium metal to make a cadmium chloride solution. So our Q would be the cadmium and chloride on top, our pressure of chlorine on the bottom. We put in the values and we got a 5.625, a positive number. So that means the log of that positive would be positive. The overall term would be negative. So with this term negative, subtracting off E is going to be less than E naught. Thank you.